I'm Joy Yule from Hire a Writer. I help brands write better websites, write better blogs, write better emails, and write better ads. And today I'm gonna to show you how to write an SEO blog. So I've literally written thousands and thousands of SEO blogs. So I have a formula. Basically I have a template that I use, I have an SEO keyword pattern that I follow, and I use it to populate the right content that gets an SEO blog up that starts bringing traffic to somebody's website. I figured, let me show you how. It'll just take a few minutes. I'll fast forward through the boring parts, but you'll get the basics of how to do this yourself. All right, party people. So this is the real deal. So I'm gonna blog in this demo about something that's just totally not industry related because I thought if I do an SEO blog about SEO blogging, it's gonna be confusing. So I thought I'll just pick something kind of benign and random. So I am going to blog about how to make an apple pie because I want to and the apple pies I made this year for Thanksgiving were tragic and tasted like the crust was like leather. So why not learn something in the process, right? All right, so whenever I blog, I split screen it. I have a giant TV monitor that I use and honestly, it's a huge um, key for me to making this process work um, because I really do have to like shift between a lot of different screens So um, in order to do this efficiently. So the very first thing I would do if I were approaching this topic um, to try to make an SEO blog about how to make apple pie is I would Google how to make apple pie and figure out who's ranking for it. So we've got a lot of queries. Doesn't look like anyone's running ads. That's kind of fun. <laughs> um, and then we've got these guys coming up. So what I would do is I would go in and I would, the beginning goal is going to be to get a keyword list. So I would go in and I would grab the people who are ranking for this, which I think is the search phrase that I want to rank for in this blog. And I would run it over into SpyFu. So I have SpyFu up here. I have a basic SpyFu membership. You can run a lot of the same, um, a lot of the same analyses with a free membership, but I happen to have one uh, because I do this all the time. So what I would do is go in to SEO research, Let's figure out what these suckers are ranking for. All right, so it looks like related keywords we're gonna use here. So I'll grab this tab over here now because I'm gonna start listing out tier two keywords. Um, so related keywords I'm gonna wanna rank for are gonna be things like this. Recipe for apple pie, apple pies, apple pie recipe, recipes for apple pie. Okay, so all of these are pretty high numbers. So, you know, for the purposes of this demonstration, it's not super important that I nail a SERP, but for the most part, if you're gonna want to choose keywords that are best related from a traffic standpoint to the traffic of your own website. So if your website gets 5,000 hits a month, then you're gonna wanna choose numbers that are achievable for your website. So you don't wanna choose numbers like Frankly, all of these probably keywords are not very achievable because um, like 23,000 a month, 22,000 a month, like those are really, um, those are really heavy hitters, which means either you're going to probably want to pay to rank for something like that. So do like a CPC campaign um, or find ones that have less of a ranking difficulty. So when you look at your SERP analyses, the two things that you're probably going to pay the most attention to when you're selecting keywords is going to be your volume and the keyword difficulty, right? So like this is a good one, pie tarts, but I'm not writing about pie tarts. So I don't really want someone to land on my page for how to make an apple pie if they're looking for pie tarts because then that's not really accurate. Okay, so like these, we got some money happening right here. Okay. So like 6,600 a month, 3,600 a month, 2,900. So this is gonna be a lot more desirable than any of these that I chose to begin with. So frankly, I'm, not, I'm just gonna get rid of those because I don't have that big of a website. Um, so I'm not going to rank for any of those things if I try. So easy apple pie, that's good. Simple apple pie recipe, money. So that's 3,600 score. How to make a pie. So if we don't have the apple in there, it's a lot lower search volume. Homemade apple pie recipe, that works. Homemade apple pie recipes. That's something you're gonna find a lot when you're doing keyword research is that the plural of something may rank differently than the singular and that various parts of speech, switching those out completely changes the word. 
This is why uh, Google ad campaigns are such an incredible pain because you have to take all that into account. Baked apple pie has a 2,400 a month, um, which again is a lot closer to what I'm looking for. Um, apple pie jam, well, let's not do any of that. Okay, cool, so I've got kind of the beginning here. Um, so I'm gonna go, let's go to number two, see what they're up to, Pillsbury. All right, so I got the URL. I'm just gonna run this back, throw it in here. Well, let's see what they got going. All right, so these are like way too high. How to make a pie, we already got. How to cook apple pie, that's a good one. Let's add that. So the goal of this is not to find every possible keyword or phrase that you would ever want in your life because obviously I'm not about to write a long form pillar blog. If I was gonna write a long form piece right now, then I would be looking into topic clusters and it would just be a lot more in depth. Ultimately, what I wanna do is find keywords for this blog that are kind of in the right world in the right universe from a numerical standpoint in the right universe from a topic standpoint relevant to people who would be searching um for this kind of content so these are fine <laughs> and apple pie like what is that even okay that's crazy all right let's just do number three so normally if it were me and i was writing a blog for a client i would take the top 10 i would go through the top 10 search results on google for this search query and I would do this process that I'm showing you right now with all of them. Yes, it's a huge pain. But uh, make sure that I'm competing and <laughs> make sure that whatever we end up with is going to actually compete. Um, so this is the last page. So these, whoa, look at these. Uh, these are way too high. So I don't know, 200,000 a month, how to make a pie we already got. So you'll find this when you start auditing these kind of things. Um, a lot of the top ranking pages for a search query are going to rank for very similar keywords and phrases. That is a very good sign for you as a researcher because it's telling you you're on the right track. That you're, you're, you know, the, the, the keyword or phrase that you've chosen kind of to base your content around is relevant. So all these related keywords then have an even better relevance um, because they're all being used by the same kind of content platforms against which you hope to compete, right? A, apple pie. Yeah, no, I just have a fundamental issue with that. Apple pie dessert. Hmm, yeah, okay, I can do that. Okay, 390 a month. That's not too bad. Okay, so that kind of gives me a lean list. Because I'm writing a short form blog, because you don't want to be here for the rest of your life, um, I'll just we'll just have those be kind of the main keywords. Now, the last thing, and um, I'm gonna just go over into Moz real quick. I just wanna show you this. So, this is something I encounter a lot when I go into write an SEO blog for clients. What they have chosen as their core keyword for this, how to make an apple pie, is incredibly ambitious. So, 851, like, it's probably not, we're not gonna get on the first page for this right away but it's not ridiculous. So for instance, if they come to me and they say like, I wanna rank for apple pie, I would have, I would just have like a moral obligation to say like, mm, probably not, let's tweak it a little bit. So then we would land on maybe like a long form or a long tail query keyword like this instead. So like I said, it's an ambitious goal if you just have a couple thousand hits a month generally on your website. For your traffic patterns, this is ambitious, but it's doable. So the key again is to find something that's as close as possible in the monthly volume to your monthly volume. Okay, just because it there's a lot behind that statement, but it is. That's what you should do. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> take my word for it. Um, so sometimes when you go into different outlets, you find different stuff. How to make an apple pie and see the world? Yes, if only. Um, and like these two, I actually want to use. So if I would, if I hadn't come over to Moz from SpyFu, I probably wouldn't have found these um, or wouldn't have thought to look for them. But these are other long tail words that Moz is telling me I should consider. So I'm gonna say how to make an apple pie from scratch and how to make an apple pie crust, which personally is what I'm interested in because it's what I'm not good at. All right, so how to make an apple pie. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and throw this in our template here. Say how to make an apple pie is gonna be our tier one keyword. Because it is our tier one keyword, we already know it is going to be what? Our H1, right? Okay, so I'm gonna throw it in here. I'm gonna go into my Google Doc 
I'm gonna change this into header one. The value of formatting when you are in your Google Doc is that this formatting, when you copy and paste into most website platforms, will transfer. So for instance, if I write this, do my H1s and H2s, and then I copy and paste it all into HubSpot or WordPress, it's going to automatically tell the code that those are the blocks I want. So instead of it just transferring as text and then I have to go in and manually change it all, it's gonna transfer it over and tell those platforms, make this an H1, make this an H2, and it's gonna do it. Um, sometimes links won't transfer the same, HubSpot especially, depending on how they've set it up. Um, but I'll just tell you as somebody who knocks these out, this is a time saver, so do it. All right, we don't know what the URL slug is gonna be, and then I'll tell you just quickly what these categories are, but these are gonna be things that I do after. So that's just my process, not necessary, but the meta description, as we all know, has to have this in it as well. So the meta description is gonna say something like, learn how to make an apple pie. We'll do that at the end. And then I'm gonna score the text at the end. So I've had clients before who are like, well, of course you didn't plagiarize. Why would you even worry about that? Or what is a readability score? These are three important metrics because they are SEO copy metrics. Readability score is gonna tell you if you're in that sweet spot, eighth to 10th grade reading level for SEO copy. So I'll show you the tool I use. It's totally free. I just like Googled it and found it and I use it all the time. Um, and then you're gonna also just double check yourself for plagiarism. Um, again, there are common phrases that just happen and sometimes by accident, so just double check yourself. And then we'll get the estimated word count at the end because again, it's gonna be important. Um, this, so I do this for clients where I'll just like outline it up here too, like as a little snapshot of what's to come. It's not really essential and especially not for this purpose, but. And then I do my inner links and my external links. I'll just list them here because if you're ever looking into developing like a backlink strategy or something, you just wanna keep really close track of that and you don't wanna have to go back through and like analyze hyperlinked stuff. All right, are we ready to write? Okay, so that's pretty much the process I would normally do to prepare to write a blog. I'm gonna take this tab back over because I'm gonna need my split screens again. So I'm gonna take my other screen out here. I'm gonna take this screen out here. And then I'm gonna do the magical thing that all copywriters do and nobody tells you about. And that's, I'm going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> how to make an apple pie. Okay, so basically what you need to make sure you do in the first paragraph is you need to hook the reader, say something kind of fluffy and whatever, and then you need to start your keywords. So what I do in order to keep track of this is I open a sticky note on my computer. You can see I've done this already today. I open a sticky note, I copy all the keywords, paste them, okay? And then as I go, I'm going to delete them. So I will know that I am definitely including all of them in the copy like I should. Um, so because there are, this is a short form piece, there are so few keywords, I am going to be certain that I use these keywords in my H2s throughout the copy. I already have how to make an apple pie in my H1. I need to make sure it's also in the first paragraph, which you will see is here. So what I would do is I would take and highlight it just for the sake of the client so they can see, hey, she's actually doing what she says she does. Okay. And then you would, you know, maybe from a copy perspective, actually, I should probably make this a little better with like outlining what's to come and all that. But for this purpose, we're really focused on the SEO. So I'm just gonna continue to illustrate that and not worry about refining or polishing anything. Okay, so let's do how to make a pie next. So how to make a pie was a good, had good numbers to it um, from a keyword perspective. So we could have how to make a pie as an H2, we could have, homemade apple pie recipe, how to make an apple pie crust, because that's what I really want to know, <laughs> and then how to cook apple pie. So I'm kind of thinking like, okay, sequentially, I'm probably going to organize this like from start to finish, right? You start with the crust, you end with the baking, okay. And then we'll do apple pie dessert as the last one. Okay, so what we did is we used... Oops, helpful okay apple pie dessert okay so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna take off all the ones that I actually just used homemade apple pie recipe I'm gonna make an apple pie crust I'm gonna apple pie. all right so then I'm gonna take all of these I'm gonna go up here I'm gonna make them my H2s 
All right, and then you can take a break while I write for a second. Okay, so then when you have finished all of your um, copy, I'm gonna score the text. So the last piece that you wanna do in an SEO blog, obviously the last piece you wanna do is actually post, but um, I'm gonna score the text and then I'm gonna write a meta description and then my actual copy work for the blog will be done. So the first thing that we're gonna do is readability score. So I use this website, readabilityformulas.com. You only get up to 3,000 words, so if you're writing a lot, obviously you're gonna to have to you know, purse it up. But I've found that their scoring is fine. I have Grammarly, I just don't like it. So, <laughs> so this is beautiful. Grade level seven, that like never happens for me. That's like, it's like the best day of my life, are you kidding? So then I would just put here um, that we scored a seven and then I always just include the flesh score because flesh is um, kind of an industry standard, obviously, that we all use. Uh, seventh grade, baby, baby, okay. Then I would do the plagiarism match. So I use this one, it's called smalleseotools.com. Again, you have a word count uh, ceiling. So yeah, a thousand words. So this can get like super annoying if you need to score a lot of text, but for something this size, we're not gonna have a problem at all. Oh, I should have looked. Both of those give me word count. I should have just paid attention, but I didn't. All right, so then you'll just wait a second, make sure that you are not ripping anything off. 0% plagiarism. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, and then the last one is word count. I just use wordcounter.net. Obviously, if you use the word count in here, it's not gonna be the same because it's picking up all of my, um, who you just saw something? <laughs> it's picking up all the words that are in my um, template too, so obviously I don't wanna count on that. All right, so this is 772. That's not bad for like 10 minutes, um, you know. If this were obviously a real client, then I would have interlinks that would include, you know, links to forms on their site, CTAs like that, and then we would include some external links that are strategically positioned to give them backlinking opportunities. Um, because it's not a real client, I won't bother to populate those, but just so you know, that's part of the process that I would suggest. And then we'll go ahead and write the meta description. So there are gonna be a couple of different opinions in the various platforms you use as to how many words a meta description is supposed to have. And it's like, seriously, it's not life or death. But the meta description is what's gonna show up as the snippet or the summary of this blog post when Google displays it to a search engine results page. So let's say something like, read this to learn how to make an apple pie. And then I would like to, and I often do, include a couple of these little suckers down here in the meta description as well, because why not, right? So all of the tips, for easy apple pie, and a simple apple pie recipe. All right, that was obviously not a complete sentence. Let's rewrite it. Okay, so that's what I would say. So that has my header, my H1. It's got a couple of H2s in it, good to go. So, friends. That is how I write an SEO blog. Not too hard. Subscribe to my channel to get more info like this. I drop new content every Sunday night that helps brands improve their content strategy. Content is super important, whether it's video, whether it's social, whether it's posts on your page or your website itself. All of this is a comprehensive part of your marketing strategy and your brand presence. If you're ready to increase your digital footprint, improve your copywriting, subscribe to the channel, hit me up in chat and I will help you out.